Good morning and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy, a show of hope and inspiration. Before we hear about today's guests, I would love to encourage you to check out my Amazon bestseller book, Chaos to Clarity, Seeing the Signs and Breaking the Cycles. It's been ranked number one new release in the 12-step genre. I share my story of trauma, addiction, and recovery to help you, the reader, and I wanna meet you where you are in your healing process and support you with knowledge I have learned through my healing journey. We all deserve to live a life of happiness and I know it's possible. Now let's hear about my incredible guests. We first meet a childhood favorite of mine, singer, actor, author, entrepreneur, and co-founder of the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, Marie Osmond. We hear about the 40th anniversary of the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals and a very special story of how the hospitals have helped Marie's children and grandchildren. Next, we get educated about bone density for women, how diet and lifestyle can reduce inflammation and increase bone health and exercise tips for building bone density with board certified orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Meredith Warner. We then hear from actor and director Jonathan Frakes. You may know him best for his portrayal of Commander William Riker in the television series Star Trek The Next Generation and the new season of Star Trek Picard. Jonathan lost his brother Daniel to pancreatic cancer over 20 years ago. He is reuniting his team, Star Trek Against Pancreatic Cancer, for Pan Can Purple Stride, the ultimate walk to end pancreatic cancer. Now let's meet my incredible guest and move towards a life of happiness. I now speak with singer, talk show host, dancer, actor, author, entrepreneur, and co-founder of the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, Marie Osmond. Welcome to the show, Marie. Marcy, you forgot to say I was the first celebrity Barbie doll. <laughs> I love that. You're so cute. I grew up with you, so I am such a fan and so excited that <laughs> you so are sweet. on Wake Up With Marcy. It's just amazing. <laughs> hey. Thank you. I love I love that you're doing this and bringing awareness to what Children's Miracle Network hospitals are doing. Uh, you guys are awesome, so thank you. Thank you. So you guys just celebrated the 40th anniversary of the Children's Miracle Network Hospital. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, 40 years. We uh, well, we we're celebrating the fact that we now help over 12 million children a year. And we have raised over $8 billion for children, but um, it's unique. We are, we are so unique as a charity in the sense that there's all these causes and they all have to be treated. And that's what we do. We help our, your local children's hospitals and 100% uh, of the money, all of it goes to the kids, to, the, to your local hospital. And uh, it's unrestricted funding, which means you may need it for research for cancer or whatever or you might need it for neonatal beds or to help families pay you know the bills the cost is so high so whatever it is uh we are there to help the, the community at the highest level you can get where 100 percent of the money goes to the kids amazing so talk to us about why this was so important to you and what has driven your passion for the children's miracle network hospitals well, I, a lot of reasons, uh, but I started performing it at a very young age, age three. But um, I just realized that it's essential to give back. And I was at, I believe it was People's Choice Awards, and they said, you know, they were asking the celebrities to do this cause. And I said, sure. They said, no, no, we can't use you, Marie, because you just did this other one. And I thought, that is so wrong on so many levels. Uh, you should be able to help however you want. And so that's where I found out that we needed a charity that helped these hospitals because they're last on government funding, which is crazy to me. And, um, and they not just treat sick children, but they train your pediatricians and go out into your schools and bring awareness and prevention. And so that's where it started. And here we are today helping 12 million kids a year. They say that over 62 kids enter a children's hospital every minute. That's a, that's a little over a child a second. And so um, the need is great. 
I think more than ever with COVID, we are now in a national state of emergency for children and the things they're going through from anxiety and depression. These hospitals are trained, nurses, staff. It's like, it's unbelievable. And it's so fun here for the 40th because we're bringing back some of our, our champion ch kids. And we have Josh Sunquist here, who is a Paralympian. He had his leg amputated at age nine from cancer. They do much better treatment now, but he is so motivational to these kids, how they can go out and make a difference, and they do. It's just positive. And we have all the best corporate people here. It's just so fun uh, to be out here and celebrating. It's incredible. So tell us about the celebration. What are you guys doing? How are you celebrating? <gasps> Well, I, I personally am doing this early in the morning, <laughs> and then the rest of the day, I'm going to all of our corporate sponsors. 7-Eleven uh, just came by. It's going to be huge what they do for your local community, along with Walmart, of course. They're fantastic, and Costco, and Dairy Queen, and my daughter's looking at a house right now, and she says, I'm using Remax because they help the kids. And so... Um, there's just a lot of fun here. We're bringing some new people looking on coming aboard. Um, we're going to have 10 of our biggest champions here to, to help get corporate and media excited. We have this great program called Extra Life United, which is gamers across the United States and Canada coming together to game and raise money for kids. And they're doing phenomenal things from dance-a-thons to all the things that we do. Um, I believe Marcy, that people want to give. They want to help. I think it's one of the best ways to get out of a funk or depression or whatever, if you're going through something difficult, is to serve others. I just think people want to know that it's really going to the kids, and Children's Miracle Network does. It stays local. It helps your local kids. It's kind of, I call it life insurance policy. <laughs> but um, it really makes a difference. I mean, here we are at 12 million kids now. So really, it's just getting everybody excited for this big 40-year celebration. Yeah, it's incredible because also, I mean, giving back, it's so true. It takes you out of yourself. It really does. The ways that you're helping children are amazing, especially after COVID and the mental health crisis. So tell us, how is the organization so successful? Because it's the most authentic charity and that's that's the way it was established when when we founded it that it was the highest level people could give from corporate to people donating a dollar at walmart or whatever it is or rounding up change at 7-eleven you know that money's really going to help kids it's not just paying you know employees or whatever that 100% of it is going to help a child's life. And I think that just, and you can do it fun. Like you can, when it's, look, go to CMN, Children's Miracle Network, hospitals.org, cmnhospitals.org. And you can find a million ways that you can have fun giving. Uh, like I always take my grandchildren when Dairy Queen does their big blizzard thing and they give, you know, a portion to, uh, to their local children's hospitals. There's so many fun ways to get involved and do things. I mean, Walmart, they'll put their, their, their managers up on the roof and have them kiss pigs and do all kinds of crazy stuff at, because people have fun giving. And so look for those things, go to cmnhospitals.org and find all these things that you can take your grandkids or, or your children and say, hey, we're helping kids today. Let's go have some fun, you know, go to Panda Express and eat some yummy chicken and know you're helping a kid. So there's so many fun things you can do. Did you perform at the anniversary? <laughs> no, um, but we have some great people performing some really great stuff, sorry. There's just so many cool people here that um, are here for the right reason. And um, sorry, you know, I've done some great stuff through my life. Um, my, my newest album, I'm 63 years old, I'm considered an old lady, but it debuted number one on Billboard. And even though that is so cool, you know, when I'm gonna leave this life, um, I hope that Sorry, my children and grandchildren will be around and know that their grandma really did something to help people. Um, I have two granddaughters that wouldn't be here if it weren't for their children's hospital. I have a daughter at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital in Nashville that wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. I have a son who wouldn't be here if it weren't for Toronto Children's Hospital. And so, um, boy, I know what they do. 
uh, from a from a personal level. So it's just so cool. You know, you can have a great idea, but the idea is only an idea until you have great people involved in it. And those are the people that are here today. Oh, Marie, I can see the impact on your life and how you're impacting others. And we're always looking for help when it comes to our children. I think I need a new estrogen patch. I think mine isn't working. <laughs> I know, they touch my heart, every one of them. Uh, I'm talking millions of children that, uh, I just did a show this last week and there were kids there saying thank you. So uh, every, every place I go, there's somebody that's been touched now. It sounds incredible and definitely something I myself am going to look into because I know the difference it makes to give back and to know the impact that you're making on children. It really changes your life. It does. And then to know that your service is making a difference really helps. So just remember, all of it goes to the kids. Yes. Amazing. So tell us one more time, how can we find more? Go to cmnhospitals.org and uh, they can help you know locally in your area who's supporting who's doing what how you can help uh, and maybe even you know have the hospital they might need help in different ways too so there's always something uh, that you can find to serve these kids and uh, and their families it's not just the kid but it's the whole family that's blessed marie it has been an honor oh you're so sweet you're a beautiful person well, and likewise, thank you for you coming are. on wake up with marcy Next, we get educated about bone density and bone health for women with orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Meredith Warner. We now learn about bone health for all ages with Dr. Meredith Warner. Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you. This is something I just had my first bone density test recently. So I know a lot of women around me that are. So when does bone density begin to change for women? I was going to say, you seem too young to have had a bone density scan. Ah, thank but... you. Thank you. I'm actually 53. Yeah. So normally bone density, you build your maximum amount of bone density sometime in your early 30s, and then it starts to, I guess, depreciate or go away at that point very slowly, but it starts. Yeah. Similar to how we lose 1% to 4% of our muscle mass um, each year starting around the age of 40 or 50. My goodness, we're just declining. <laughs> at no. 50, Which it's all over. <laughs> So let's talk about diet and lifestyle, how that reduces inflammation and increases our bone health. Great, yeah. So one of the primary ways you can actually increase your bone mass is with exercise. There are some drugs that can cause bone mass to increase. Most of the osteoporosis drugs simply prevent further bone loss. Okay. Um, the problem with the drugs is they're not very covered, they're very expensive, they have side effects. The best thing you can do for yourself is weight bearing exercise. So in other words, resistance, lifting weights, loading the bones, the body senses load and will deposit minerals, calcium, magnesium into the bone and make them stronger and they'll last longer. Um, you may have heard how when astronauts go in space, they come back osteoporotic. That's because they lack gravity. The body senses that pulls calcium out of the bone. Wow. So you can do the opposite with weightlifting weightlifting. So let's say you don't really have any weights at home. Like, can you tell us some exercise tips to help us? Yeah, great question. So yoga's actually been shown to improve bone mass because one of the ways it works is the muscle pulling on the bone actually will give that same stimulus to, to deposit calcification. So things like wall sits, um, body weight squats, planks, Mm -hmm. uh, you can do a lot of exercises without a full set of kettlebells or curl bars or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it's also good because, I mean, you can get these exercises from so many places too, like YouTube. I mean, you can find ways to get these exercises and, and know what you need to do, right? That's correct. Uh, there's a, uh, 
a whole world of yoga out there that you can access online. Personally, when I do yoga, I need an instructor to make sure I'm doing the positions correctly because mm -hmm. uh, that's when you get the maximum effect. But um, I'm very stiff, so maybe that's just me. Yeah. Uh, but I think yoga is one of the easiest ways for people to start. And then, yeah, there's plenty of body weight only exercise routines you can do. Yeah, I think that that's and really- And still get the benefit. Yeah, that's really good. So let's talk about supplements and what we okay. should be taking. Yeah, so all of us should probably be on magnesium and D3 and omega-3s. Um, we mm -hmm. should be taking calcium and zinc as well. But something like 60% of Americans are deficient in magnesium, which is a mandatory cofactor to allow calcium and D3 to work in the bone. Mm -hmm. Most of us are D deficient. So unless you're able to spend 30 to 60 minutes in sunlight and you have a very healthy diet, you should probably be supplementing with D3. I personally take about 4,000 units a day. The recommendations vary from 1,000 to 5,000 units a day, depending on your age. Calcium is usually about 1,200 milligrams a day. Um, and I take K2 as well, which makes the D3 and the calcium all work better. Okay. Tell us quickly about well theory. We got just about a minute. Okay, the well theory is my line of natural medicine and supplements. Um, it actually started as I found myself recommending so many um, supplements to help with bone healing after surgery. So I combined them all in our initial um, supplement called Connective Tissue Multi, and it has D3 and C and zinc and magnesium and calcium. Um, and since then, I've just gone on to make a line of supplements that reduce inflammation, which is why omega-3 helps bone and muscle, believe it or not. It reduces inflammation, which reduces uh, what are called the osteoclasts, which are the bone eating cells. So that's one of the reasons you wanna be omega-3s. But the well theory is just a line of supplements to help reduce chronic inflammation, oxidative stress, and promote health. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, where can we find you, Dr. Warner? You can find me at my practice website is warnerorthopedics.com and then thewelltheory.com. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Warner, for coming Great. on the show and educating us. So important. Always my pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, Mars. Next, we will hear about the ultimate walk to end pancreatic cancer with actor and director Jonathan Frakes and why PanCan is so important to him. I will now speak with actor and director Jonathan Frakes. Hello, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, how are you? I'm doing great. So I wanna talk about something that's very important and that you're involved in, and, and I wanna hear why this is so important. And that's your involvement with the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Can you tell us about that? Pancan. Pancan. And can I got involved? My late great wonderful brother Daniel Frakes died about 25 years ago mm. at the age of 41. We, we took him to the hospital. He was jaundiced. They opened him up with what they call the Whipple, which is the beginning of the pancreatic cancer surgery. They looked at him, they closed him up, and essentially said, We're sorry, he might live for six months. There's nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. He died the week before our daughter was born. So, obviously. Yeah massive trauma in our family and mm -hmm. and um you know an unforgettable unforgettable memory yeah my mom and i mourned my dad really didn't deal with it very well he ended up dying a few years later and i think part of it was that the loss of his son was massive yeah um kitty swink who is our hopeful and the leader of our trek against pancreatic cancer team is a dear old friend from way back when i lived in new york she is on the other end of the spectrum, a 19 year pancreatic cancer survivor. Wow. So when Daniel died, there was a 4% survival rate. Last year, there was a 12% survival rate, which still admittedly sucks, but it's three times what it was. So pancreatic pan can is 
seeking to raise money, to raise awareness, obviously, and most significantly to find an early detection method because most people who get pancreatic cancer are detected too late and they die. Mm. Patrick Swayze, Alex Trebek, yeah. all these people from that we all know. Right. And on January 29th, January 29th, April 29th <laughs> is the um, Purple Stride, which takes place in 50 cities around the country. Incredible. Where we raise money for pancreatic cancer. So please join us. Yeah. And I have part of a team, the Trek Against Pancreatic Cancer, John Billingsley, who's the doctor from Enterprise, who plays Phlox, Armin Shimmerman, the famous quark from uh, from Deep Space Nine, Kitty, who's played a number of roles in the show, and myself. And we are trying to raise 90 grand to um, help this this yeah. process. If we can if we can find research doctors who can find a way, a simple way in a blood test or mm -hmm. some kind of marker that would indicate that pancreatic cancer is in fact in tell, your in your world. Tell us tell us the progress that's been made. Well, I mean the idea that there's uh, I mean I've been working on them for 3 years. The, the just the idea that each year the survival rate goes up is mm -hmm. is amazing. And the, I think what I'm finding more and more as I'm involved with these people is that PanCan as a society is the place to go as a family member as well. So the person who's got pancreatic cancer obviously needs all the assistance they can get but the the people affected by that person's yes. cancer are that's who they also take care of them wow. so when daniel died and um when billingsley's mothers died of the same thing there was we weren't given any alternatives mm -hmm. now if you go to pancan there are there are treatment alternatives there is incredible support mm. so the wow. things that we've encouraged now is that when you go for your checkup if there's somebody in your world, uncle, father, brother, sister, somebody in that sort of next generation out who has had pancreatic cancer, tell your doctor and they will obviously deal with it. The, um, the other thing is simple signs like a, um, if you're 50 and you all of a sudden you get diabetes, you have weird back pain. These are all indicators that, uh, that Kitty has pointed out are now not direct lines, but certainly suggesting that need the checked out. It's possible. So is there an age that we should start looking for this or is it just, you oh, know, boy. signs that, that we, we may have, like you were just sharing? Yeah, that's a really good question. I don't know that there is an age. I don't think uh -huh. that there's anything too early. I mean, right. uh, 41 when my brother died seemed impossible. And right. Right. So, and, and, but how do they detect it? That's I mean, isn't the it thing. very difficult if you can't just detect it? So that's exactly what's going on now is that the uh, the research is seeking a simpler detection. It's not a simple blood test. It's not a simple. So unfortunately, what was happening for decades mm -hmm. was that doctors opened up people's stomachs and looked inside and saw how bad, you know, does the liver have to come out? The kidneys mm. have to come out a foot of the intestines has to come out and then we get the pancreas. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a bad system. It is a bad system. And, 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 and especially in today's age, right? We, yeah. We should be even more progressed. We should be area. further than that, right? Yes, exactly. We've got exactly. the web telescope looking at galaxies far away. I know, I know. It, it's incredible. So let's just talk real quick about the final season of Star Trek Picard. How's that been for you? Is it the final season? I don't know. Is it the final season? Ah, Maybe a birdie told me that. I'm not sure. Ah, it's <laughs> it's certainly scheduled as a final season, but it has been so well received. We're all hoping that there will be yet yeah. some other ride with the yeah. legacy. Well, I know it's, been, a, it's been delightful. I know. There's a lot of people out there that would hate to hear it's the final season. So tell us where we can find you and, and be a part of your team for PanCan. Okay. You go to PanCan website and you go to the Trek Against Cancer, Trek Against Pancreatic Cancer, and you sign up. And we're looking to get about 90 grand. The, the whole purple stride on April 29th is look, hoping to raise 19 million. We'll see mm. if that, how that goes. Yeah. So um, join us. You can support us individually. You can support us as a team. Right. Every little bit helps. Five bucks, 10 bucks. Even if you can't, spread yeah. the word and someone around you may have been affected or find a way to help. And this, uh, yeah, and this is happening April 29th 
And April 29th, is, I'm sure it's in New York. It's in, uh, it's in literally in 60 cities in the country. 60 this, cities, this, uh, amazing. Purple, so take a, purple Stride. Purple Stride, take a look at that. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your story and, and for all the wonderful work you're doing. You're a dear. Thank you very much for having me. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye, live long, prosper. You too. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Please keep in touch with me on Facebook and Instagram for inspiration during the week. I want to thank my guests on today's show. If you would like to learn more or check their websites, please go to wakeupwithmarcy.com. Remember to be kind to yourself and kind to others, and I'll see you next weekend.